Good morning, Facebook. Hello, hello, everybody. It is Saturday morning. It is about 7.20, um, Saturday morning, and it's about seven degrees outside, and I'm getting ready to go for my run here. I've um, been prolonging my run for a little while. Um, busy day today. Um, Justin and I have some plans um, earlier this morning, so I've got to run early and get rocking and rolling. Let's see, it is Saturday morning. Like I said, it's seven degrees out. Um, at least that's what my uh, that's what my thermometer said or my app said. I'm literally I'm going to go out and run in about 15 minutes here with a couple of people um, who I haven't heard from yet. So I might start to run by myself. All right, so I um, want to drop some more salmon facts um, and educate some people on salmon. Uh, salmon can be a very very or a heart healthy or a healthy food, or it can be um, pure poison, um, really pure poison. Um, Michael, yes, we did get the pouches. Uh, I think Jamie mentioned that yesterday on her Facebook Live, her happy hour. Uh, I think she might even show him a picture where the pouches came yesterday. Um, I'll talk about the pouches in a brief moment. Uh, so salmon, salmon facts. Um, we are doing a $9.99 salmon uh, dish all week until tomorrow. It's our nine nine. It's our big nine ninety nine of the week. And last week we did the ribeye, this week's salmon. It's been a huge hit for us. So for $9.99, you can get our salmon, which is normally $16.99. And it comes with a dill and mustard aioli sauce. Uh, it is wild, line-caught uh, Pacific Alaskan salmon, specifically Alaskan salmon um, from the Sitka area. And it is line-caught um, as opposed to net-caught. So people, a lot of people know that wild salmon is superior to farm salmon. But a lot of people, when they go out to eat, will just eat farm salmon. Just because it's on the menu and you like salmon. Thinking, oh, well, how bad could it actually be? So the other day I talked about the food ratios on how um, three pounds of wild fish makes one pound of farmed fish. So they actually have to create a deficit in the ocean, a protein deficit in the ocean. Um, today I want to mention about mortality rates. So people think, well, how bad could salmon farming actually be? I know it's bad, but how bad is it? So every region of salmon farming um, has a mortality rate. Mortality rate means a death rate of how many fish die percentage-wise. And when I talk about this, when I speak to people, when I do speeches, or when I just talk in casual conversations, people are shocked by this mortality rate. And some of the best salmon farming regions in the world, supposedly, um, like Scotland, Scotland's supposed to be one of the best. Faroe Island's supposed to be one of the best. And they all say they're the best, right? Norwegian, they all, Canadian, Bay of Fundy, they all, they all say they're the best. Um, but, you know, a lot of people say, yeah, Scottish salmon is really, really, really good. Scottish farm salmon is awesome. So, mortality rates. The industry average. So, Scottish being supposedly one of the better regions. Two out of every ten fish die in Scotland, it's like 21 or 22 percent, so just over two fish per 10 die because of the conditions they're living in. If you were to drive past a beef farm, cattle farm, cattle ranch, and see two out of every 10 cattle dead lying in the field and in the, in the feedlot um, in the grass, you'd be pretty shocked and be like, something's wrong with that farm. Like, 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 where's the USDA inspector? Where's like food safety? Where's something going on? I mean, these cattle are sick and they're dying. And that's not including the ones that would have died, but they got to, to, to actually be able to, to process them. We don't see this because in the fish world, because salmon farms and farm fish happen underneath the water and we can't, we don't have eyes underneath the water. Um, and every time that somebody sneaks near a salmon farm and drops a GoPro and goes in and checks out what's going on down there, it is horrific, horrific. Um, fish, you know, just deformed fish, fish that have severe disease on them, fish are just swimming, you know, just swimming and floating by and you can see something's wrong with them. Um, fish that have parts of, their, parts of their flesh eaten out of them from other fish. Um, things that like lice attacking the fish. It is horrific to see these living conditions for, for, for these farmed salmon. So of course, you're gonna have a death rate. And so mortality, the mortality rate is very, very common in, um, it is, it is, but it's part of the game. It's part of what happens. So when so the next time, time a chef tells you how good his Faroe Island salmon is or his Scottish salmon or their Norwegian salmon, Ask them what the more t industry mortality rate of that region is. 
Um, and of course, they probably won't know because they don't do their research. Else they wouldn't be telling you that their Faroe Island salmon is good, or that their Scottish salmon is good, or their Bay of Fundy salmon is good. Literally the best, the quote unquote, the best salmon farms in the world like Lock Duhart. You can go on YouTube and you can see what the locals do. The locals will film um, a lot of these, a lot of these um, um, uh, excavations of, 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 of the fish because you have to actually go in there with a the machine and just suck out fish for hours when you have a die off across, across the farm. And the stuff gets loaded in the trucks Put on the trucks, and who knows where it goes? It probably gets rendered down into 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 pet pro, into into pet food. Um, so, but you go to Lock Duhart. The, the, really, the real way to find out if a salmon farm is is how good a salmon farm is, is talk to the locals there. If somebody says, "Oh, this salmon farm is fantastic, and they're doing this and they're doing that," they might be a little bit better than the other farms. And again, there's no right way to do the wrong thing. So, if you talk to the locals, you'll actually get a true picture of what's going on in the farm. And Lock Duhart, you can go on YouTube and search Lock Duhart Mortality, which is Lock Duhart supposed to be, they, they tout themselves as, as the best salmon farm out there. You'll see people record on more on death on, 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 on die-offs. They're just there sucking fish out of the ocean and loading on a truck, and this is Lock Duhart. And, and you you'll see, you'll see pictures of a lot of salmon farms. There'll be like these big blue bins um, on the side. Those blue bins are typically where they throw the dead salmon into. Um, and the stench from the salmon, and, and I was telling a story about that about Bill Bryden when he was talking to us. He lives up in um, up in uh, the east coast of Canada here uh, near the salmon farms, and he says in the summertime when there's die off, the whole all the oil from the fish just coats the side of the shore, and it'll just coat it all summer long. There's no way to get it out. It just it's this fatty salmon fish, uh, sa uh, um, salmon fat. Um, from from the die off of salmon and it just it just coats the, the side of the water. This isn't the part that the chefs tell you about what's happening. This happens, folks, in every salmon farm open pen because that's just the way that they're raised. There's no right way to do the wrong thing. So mortality mortality rates um, of salmon. There's there's Scotland being one of the highest. So. Um, that's it, folks. Um, I just got a text from one of my running buddies. Said it's too cold. I guess I'm on. I guess I'm on my own right now um, for a little while. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Um, all right, folks. Uh, that is it. Our salmon 9.99 special is happening all week. Um, Michael, as promised, I'll talk about the pouches. So, um, Michael is the owner and founder of a great vodka company called Black Infusions. And they um, they make these amazing um, vodkas, infused vodkas, and um, an apricot, and a fig, and another flavor coming soon. So um, you hear us talking about these a lot because we're a huge fan. Um, Michael drove all the way down from Boston last week to visit us and talk to us about his brand and show us another product that he's developing, and to show us these cool pouches. So these cool pouches can now be, we're gonna fill these up with cocktails and, um, and it comes with a straw. And uh, basically the, um, these pouches um, are to hold cocktails for Black Infusions line. So we're super excited about this. This will make to go for cocktails a bit easier. We are allowed to serve um, cocktails to go uh, ever since um, uh, the pandemic hit. Uh, they relaxed the laws here in New York and they allow us to serve cocktails to go. The only, the only caveat is you have to buy something substantial. Um, and there was a little bit of an argument for a while between Cuomo and the liquor liquor authority back in back in the early summer because Cuomo said wings were not substantial. The liquor authority says, "No, no, no! You don't know what you're talking about. You didn't read. The, you haven't read our guidelines. Um, wings are considered substantial. In fact, cookies cookies are considered substantial. So if you wanted to go into a uh, restaurant and buy um, a cocktail to go and they're telling you well, you need to buy food you need to buy an entree technically you don't need to buy an entree you can literally walk in and buy cookies cookies are considered substantial so as long as we're selling alcohol to go you have to have something con considered substantial <clears throat> so I'm very excited that we're gonna be able to do the black fig you can come in and get a black fig cocktail now to go but now we'll have the pouches the branded pouches um, cookies and figs, Michael said cookies and figs. Yeah, cookies and figs. Um, so we're really excited about that and we're super excited about this other project we're doing uh, with Michael. Um, really, really cool. So 
Uh, Michael has teamed up with one of our other favorite distilleries um, out there and um, um, is offering these barrel-aged cocktails. So this is a little, little barrel, a little oak barrel that's charred inside, um, brand new barrel. And Mad River, which is up in Vermont, which we buy their rum, their vanilla rum, and we buy their rye. Their rye is so good. It's this toasted rye, a little chocolatey on notes on it. Really, really good. And they're an independent distillery up there um, in uh, Vermont. And Michael and them have teamed up to offer the Mad Hatton. The Mad Hatton. I think there's another one you can do in here too, I believe. Um, but we're doing the Mad Hatton, which is um, Mad River's rum. And... Michael's um, Fig Vodka. Uh, so it's gonna be a Mad Hatton, really, really good. I had one the other night and somebody tasted it. They're like, oh my gosh, this is really, really good. So Mad Hatton. So this, this little bad boy will be in use very, very soon. Um, and uh, this will be filled with, with those bottles. So that's really awesome. Um, the folks at Mad River are awesome. If you've ever seen Mad River products, give them a try. Um, if you like rye, their rye is just really, really an awesome rye. Uh, they're van they're, what I like about their products is like Michael's, it's their pure products. We were having a hard time getting um, vanilla, real vanilla vodka, because when you buy, um, oh, and Jamie's saying add, um, adding Luxardo cherry liqueur too to that in Manhattan. So when you buy like flavored vodkas, a lot of those vodkas just aren't real. They're using synthetic flavorings that mimic a natural flavoring so they can get to call them natural flavorings. It's, it's, it's a scam, basically. Whenever you see nat naturally flavored this and that, it's, it's terrible. And sometimes companies are doing the right thing, um, the, uh, the, the um, BATF or, the, or the whoever licenses, uh, oversees the labeling, sometimes won't allow them to write really what they're actually doing that's good. So Michael has, can explain more on that. We're going to want a Facebook Live to talk about that. But so um, there's very few vodka companies out there that actually take the real product and stick it into the vodka and infuse it without adding other things. And I've, all, I've, I've explained this often as like, imagine, imagine if, if, if you make chicken stock in a restaurant. If you make chicken stock um, and all of a sudden you don't make it good enough, then all of a sudden you buy a chemical um, or an enhancement and throw it in there. Well, why'd you do that? Why didn't you make it right to begin with? Well, some, a lot of companies will do that. They'll, they'll make it half-assed to begin with, um, throw in some of the real stuff, and then bump it up with, with artificials and synthetics and, and, and other flavorings. So it rounds out the flavor and brings it up and make enhancements to it. So, and, but there's a very few handful of companies that will not do that. They'll do it right from the beginning, and Michael happens to be one of those companies. So we were looking for a vanilla vodka, and True, Green Bar, um, discontinued their vanilla vodka. I don't know if they discontinued it um, producing it or they just continued it here in New York. They're a company out of um, LA, really awesome company, Green Bar. Same concept, really high quality ingredients, pure ingredients, nothing funky. You make it right the first time, you don't add enhancers and we couldn't get their vanilla vodka anymore. So we're like, what are we gonna do for a vanilla vodka? We just can't find something that is, we you can find something that tastes good, but it's not real. And so we use this vanilla vodka for Jamie's um, espresso Manhattan. Um, espresso, yeah, espresso uh, martini, espresso martini, espresso martini. And so we ended up went and going with um, Mad River's rum. They make a vanilla infused rum uh, that we use for that drink now. And we've been doing that for a couple of years uh, since we lost the vanilla vodka. So um, real ingredients, real good. So check out Mad River. Mad River has some really awesome stuff. Of course, Michael has some really award-winning stuff. Michael just got some great reviews from, I think, Wine Enthusiast um, that he was showing us the other day. Uh, 94 points, 96 points, something like that. Some, some, some crazy good points um, for taking real ingredients and uh, good, high-quality vodka and mixing them together. So um, we tasted Michael's uh, straight. Michael, do you sell the vodka straight at all? Um, I know, obviously, you can buy the infusions, but we tasted Michael's vodka, and we are like, well, wow, is this smooth. Um, so I don't know if you can actually buy the vodka by itself. I'm not sure. Um, so that's it, folks. Um, I got to go. I got to go run. I've got my run in, and then Justin and I are off to an appointment, and we'll have, hope everybody has a great, great day. Michael says, not yet. Okay. Well, Michael had some of his, his straight vodka with him in his bag, um, and... Um, and it was super, super, super smooth. Um, Michael's also coming out with some other products, so stay tuned. 
Um, one of the biggest segments right now in the wine, beverage, the beverage industry is these pre-made drinks. A lot of companies are coming up with um, drinks that are already already formulated. Oops, my running shoes gripped onto the bar there. Some of them are already coming up with drinks that are already formulated. Like right here is a Moscow Mule, um, a margarita basically. Um, so that's a really big growing segment that um, a lot of companies are looking into. And Michael and I were talking about stuff like that um, because it's just... If you're a company now, you, you might want to look into that kind of segment. Um, of course, these are a huge hit too, uh, branded stuff like that for restaurants to go. But realistically, you know, when people are out hiking, um, they like to take a drink with them. When they're out rafting, when they're out golfing, when they're out doing anything, um, RTD, Michael's saying, RTD segment, ready to drink segment. So when people are out doing anything, they like to have something that's already mixed and high quality and ready to go and um, and more and more companies are offering these now, so it's um, it's really it's really cool. Um, so that's it, folks. I gotta go run. I gotta get out of here. Hope to see everybody soon. Everybody, be safe, be warm. Um, of course, um, drink lots of water, lots of sunshine, vitamin D, vitamin C, all those kinds of things. I haven't talked about beet juice in a while because um, I've been out of stock of beet juice, but beet juice is back in stock now. Um, I try to drink beet juice before I run or after I run. Great boost of nitric oxide. Great for blood flow, circulation, your blood vessels. Um, great for um, just respiratory in general. Uh, beet juice is really awesome. We sell an organic beet juice. Um, just pure beet juice. Um, and it's really the real energy drink. Beet juice is a real energy drink. If you actually mix this with some, some coconut water, um, you've got an amazing, amazing sports drink, 50-50. It'll look like wine. So when you're out running... Um, and you can pull out that you're like, oh, I'm drinking well, Pinot Noir today, and it's really beet juice and and, uh, and coconut water. I've ran many marathons on that formula. So Aileen's saying it's three degrees. Yes, it's three degrees, Aileen. Are you going for your run today, Aileen? Um, all right, I got to go for my run. Talk to everybody later.